Last season's top two in the Isthmian League Premier Division meet at Champion Hill this afternoon, needing National League South points for very different reasons. Host Dulwich Hamlet will once again hope that home form can keep their heads above water in their relegation battle, having taken four points from the last four games here. Gavin Rose shuffles the pack today as a Congai Vos, Thompson and Green all return, having not featured in last week's heavy defeat at Oxford City. Billericay Town begin the day in seventh and one point above the chasing pack for playoff places. However, their form has stuttered in recent weeks, arriving today with four successive losses, including a dramatic home defeat to lowly Hungerford Town at, uh, last Saturday. New arrival Jack Paxman comes straight into the side in place of Adam Coombs. The two sides played out an entertaining 1-1 draw in Essex in October, but who can pick up their important points today? Pass on last month. Made 78 appearances, scoring five goals for the Hamlet. Um, unfortunately, Shane passed away about over a month ago. His funeral was this week, so please be upstanding and silent for Shane at Mangotta. Mm Prodding one downfield. Thompson again heads that on. And Clunas is uh, in behind down the right wing. Doyley played him on side. Clunas sends in a cross towards near post and Julian has to fist it away. Quick distribution by the veteran goalkeeper. Very, very good goalkeeper down the years, Alan Julian. Helped on by Moses Emmanuel. Brought down by Jamal Lotza. Played against Dulwich for Maidstone in pre season. Loza on he goes. Gets to the byline. Cross deflects into the side netting and out for a corner. Paxman tussles with Ferguson and flicks over his head. Afete then nods it back to Paxman. Good in between those two. Afete sends in a cross just over the head of uh, Sam Kelly. Driven in from distance by Danny Waldron. Wasn't too far wide. Edwards rooted to the spot there. Wonderful night that was. Clunis scored the other goal in that game. Vos into Akinyemi. He's able to swivel and drive towards the area. Akinyemi can get the shot and he can on his weaker left boot and he forces Julian into a low save. Didn't hit it with the power that he might have done on his right foot, but lovely turn from Akinyemi. The referee having a word with a few players for a bit of pushing and shoving in the six yard box, in the 18 yard box, sorry. Comes the latest one from Paxman. Headed it and goal. Joe Kizzy, he's got his head on it. He scores against Dulwich again, just as he did last season. Paxman, best corner he's sent in so far. And Kizzy with a firm header. Took a deflection on its way and Edwards had little chance of saving that one. And Billericay have a lead here at Champion Hill again. Paxman marks his debut with an assist and Kizzy just as he did. Again, it's uh, Dulwich in March has given Billericay the lead. Maskell's going to uh, play as a centre-back, I think. Chambers in the middle. Oh, I'm not sure actually. I'll uh, confirm in a moment. In comes the uh, cross. Let's bobble through to Edwards. A good ball in that by Kizzy. Emmanuel ready to pounce. He claims he was being impeded. He did 15 goals in the last six before today. That included the five at Torquay and the four against Oxford. Chambers volleying that one towards his area. It's bouncing ball. This is dangerous. Cook's given that straight to Emmanuel. Awful mistake from Anthony Cook. And it's been capitalised on by Moses Emmanuel. Well, when there's a bouncing ball, it's dangerous enough. Cook should have tried to clear. He's nodded it straight to Moses Emmanuel, who volleys home from uh, just about the penalty spot. Easily finished by Billericay's top scorer. 20 up for the season for Emmanuel. Fetto with the latest throw. Ramps up a long one down the line. It's helped on by Emmanuel. A Congo better than uh, Paxman in the air. And Chambers looks head one back towards Edwards. It's spilled by Edwards, but he gets to the second attempt. Well, Chambers asked a lot of his goalkeeper there. The ball still doesn't look 10 yards. Again, this looks about five yards from the referee. Green drills it in. Thompson gets to the shot, saved by Julian. Wouldn't have seen that till late, Alan Julian, but he's palmed it away for the corner. If anything, Thompson hit it almost straight at him so he could just stick his arms up and save. And that raised the crowd levels a little bit. Cook will take. 
It's a good looking ball. Flying it. It's a Congo off the line by Julian. Chambers trying to keep it alive. Ferguson knocks it down and it's volley clear, I think, by Waldron in the end. A Congo looking for his first Dulwich goal. Got good contact on that and Julian's made another good save to prevent Dulwich from finding a way back into this game at the end of the first half. Foe oh, sends the ball towards the area. Thompson will tussle with Afete and nods it on. Low save by Julian. Again, didn't have too far to move, Alan Julian. Had to get down low. All down by Clunis to uh, Akinyemi. Ferguson, Akinyemi's down in a heap. Afete and him had come together. He's struggling, Dippo. Loza trying to take the ball on down the uh, left. In by Kelly. Well, they had a man in the penalty area unmarked. It was a good block by Chambers in the end. They had three on one there momentarily, uh, Billericke. Tussles with uh, Thompson. He uh, got a goal side of Thompson. The corner came in. It was cleared. Foe's going in with Loza. It's dropped for Jamal Loza. Bobbles past the uh, far post. Dulles didn't clear their lines effectively in the end. Thompson. Good turn from Dan Thompson. Going on. Breaks into the area. Dan Thompson. Just wide. Goal kick. It wasn't a touch on his way through. Well, so close to... Uh, Reducing the deficit there, Thompson. And he's forced Julian in some good saves in this game. And uh, that one just uh, passed the uh, far post from Thompson. Eventually breaks Ferguson's way. Vos takes over. And then tries to send Akinyemi on his way. It's a lovely idea that from Dominic Vos. Julian's come herring off his goal line out of his area. And uh, it's a throw in for Dulwich. No foul. Alan Julian wanted a free kick against uh, Dippo Akinyemi down the wing there. Nod it on. It's dropped for Ferguson just inside the area. Vos going to send it back wide to Cook. Still bodies in there for him if he can get across against Emmanuel. <laughs> Cook wants a penalty there under a bit of uh, a foul from Emmanuel. Still he goes on Cook. Felt like there was another foul in, him in there in the end. Kongai. Great ball out of defence. Clunis. First touch was excellent there. Was that a foul? Surely a foul on Clunis. Referee has given a penalty. The assistant didn't flag. Referee has pointed to the spot. Dulwich have a chance here to uh, get back into the game. Well, Clunis pulled down as he broke into the area there. I think Afete is going to get cautioned as well. Well, this is a big moment potentially for Dulwich. This has to go in. Fete is going to get the first yellow card of the game. Julian trying to uh, psych out uh, the Dulwich team here. Akinyemi, steely concentration. And he's ready. Referee's bonus whistle. Up he steps, Akinyemi. Bit of a stuttering run up. Sends it the wrong way. Goal. Dulwich are back in it. Akinyemi scores for a third successive game. And Dulwich are back in this one. Ten minutes to go. Goal number 15 for Akinyemi this season. Very calmly done. Would you expect anything else from him? Man who scored that penalty in May and scored at Torquay last month. Adds to his tally for the season. They've got ten minutes to uh, find another now. Not given up. Cook. They come over. Akinyemi's in there. Got in the header, but over the top it goes. Green. It's a good looking ball in towards Thompson. Deflects, oh, just wide. Thompson flicked it on. Shouts of handball from Cook. It hit a bit of Ricky defender. Wrong footed Julian, went the wrong side of the post. I thought for a moment it was going in the bottom corner. Thompson may have well feel he should have got more of a header on that. Dulles right set for the corner and nothing more. Latest one in from Cook. Oh, it's, it's a whole host of players out to Arian Tash by edge of the area. That's a block as well by Afete. Screams of handball again from Dulwich. He's holding his, uh, his chest, I think, Afete. Tash has lined up the shot from the edge of the area. Up to Akinyemi. Ferguson down this left wing, running at Kizzy. Onto his right foot and then back onto his left, Ferguson. Can he get across now? Yes, he can. It's a good looking ball as well. Cook flies in towards Thompson. Couldn't quite fall for him. It's cleared by Kepakawa Dulwich, giving this a real go though. And again on the ball from Cook's pass. Across it comes to Vose. 
Now it's the left wing green running at Kizzy. Turning this way in that green low cross. Blot comes to Vos. He fancy the shot. He does. Vos shoots straight at Julian though. Don't think he strikes as he would have wanted there, Dominic Vos. Vos trying to carry the ball down the left and then onto his right foot. So he fancy another shot from distance. Dominic Vos. It does. Deflects all just wide. Julian wouldn't have reached that. The deflection actually carried it over Alan Julian. Taj backs, sends it across. It's a deep one. Cook will retrieve. Edwards is still in the penalty area, incidentally. Vose, 18 yards out, sends it in. Top of the chest down towards Akinyemi. It's dropped for Cook now. Sends in a deep cross. Chambers tries to knock it back down. Julian should claim this in the air, up in the air by the defender. Head tennis going on now. Fete tries to clear and in the impact and gets his foot on it. Inside the Dulwich half, everyone back in their area almost for uh, Billericay. Just two men outside it. Green on the left wing. Floats in. Julian's come for this. Gets a good hand on that. Throw on the far side will go Dulwich's way. It's away by Cole uh, Kepakawa. Not a great clearance. It's come to uh, Tajbacks. 35 yards out. And he ran into his man. It's spun Clunis's way, though. Out to Vose on this left wing. Vose crosses in. That's on Thompson. It's an own goal! Danny just scored! Oh, would you believe it? It's an own goal! It's off a Billy Ricky head! A Kong lies wheeled away in celebration! Dulwich won't mind! Oh, Vose's cross was flicked to into his own net by a Billy Ricky man! And the Hamlet of a goal deep in injury time! It's 2 2! Well, they've been knocking on the door. They've been smashing down the windows and they finally got the equaliser. A Kong guy is claiming it, but I'm sure it's an own goal. I don't care right now. Dulliger at 2 2. <laughs> Given a great account of themselves in the second half. Now, can they make sure they don't go and concede the other end? Cunnington's got the ball from the restart to come to Aeong. Cunnington down the right wing. Green blocks him off. Can't prevent the uh, ball out the door, but the referee's blown his full time whistle and listens to the roar. How big could that point be? Come the end of April, Dulwich at 2 0 down at half time. Gav, uh, full credit to the boys for that second half performance to come back from what looked like a pretty bleak position at half time. Yeah, definitely. Um, 100% uh, full credit to them. Uh, 2 0 down, and to be honest with you, I thought Villaricky were the better team. Uh, they, were, they were very comfortable in the first half. Uh, the two goals were one I thought Preston should have come for the first cross um, in the six yard box and the second one uh, obviously Cook has made a, uh, an error um, for them to score apart from that I think they had a knockdown where Jamie chested the ball down and, and, and Danny's shot just passed our, our goal but apart from that they didn't really have many cut for, uh, chances in the, in the first half but they had better possession uh, better territory and we hadn't really done anything in the half and we spoke to them at half time and, and just asked them to be a bit braver to not leave anything out out on the pitch, um, um, to not to, to not have doubt, to commit people, um, and I thought we played a lot better in the second half. We gave them two goals. Um, I don't think it was through dishonesty. I think they were genuine mistakes. I think when someone doesn't run with their man or doesn't do their job, then I think it's different. But I think they were two genuine mistakes. I think he's challenged for the first header. It's a good header. It's a good run. And I think the second goal is just unfortunate. Um, the guy's read where Cook is going to head it. And then, ugh, and these things happen. So half time, we stuck together, we rallied up. Um, Gaffer said, just stay positive, keep doing what you're doing. And luckily for us, in the second half, we managed to turn it around. He said as well that he said, don't leave anything out on the pitch, and you can you can say that you didn't. Yeah, for sure. And listen, I think we've been inconsistent. That goes without saying. But I think I guess since I would say East Thurrock, I'd say the commitment levels have been high. I'd say everybody's running, everybody's digging in for each other. I think it's been unfortunate. Sometimes we've come away from it and, and, and we've been stung or punished. But I think all in all, um, the last kind of six weeks, the spirit has been good. And I think today we got the rewards for that. Respect to, um, to Nairon and, and Green, who are playing in, um, in uh, positions that really ain't their first port call, but they were very uh, professional in their, in their jobs. Um, they've done very well. They, they were attacking options for us as well. Dippo worked honestly, uh, Dan Thompson. There ain't many that didn't put a shift in, in that second half. Um, so credit to them, um, they've done really well for, for themselves. A direct approach as well, they were um, prepared to run at players which we haven't always seen over the last few weeks. Yeah, we did ask them at the half time to commit people. 
We even spoke about why players maybe committing uh, fullbacks to possibly get penalties and, 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 and maybe commit them um, to get sent off. Because when you're 2 0 down, you need every, every stroke of luck you can get. Um, so, Nairon, uh, great ball for Magnus. Um, Nairon, great touch in an area that he's used to being in. Um, won us a penalty and Dipo dispatched it well. And the crowd made a real difference in that second half as well. Probably the best noise we've had since we've come back. There is that, but I think I'd prefer to give the players credit for that, to be honest with you. I think. I think the crowd always try, uh, but they have to have something to cheer about. And I think the fact that they could see people working hard, running, there was a, a few half chances. They gave them a little bit of hope to, to actually get excited about. Um, so I have to give the players the credit for that today. I think the players made the, the supporters feel that like there was something to cheer about and to get excited about by their effort, their energy, uh, especially in the second half. So I'd probably credit the boys for that today. But yeah, we, I mean, yeah, we, we know that our, our crowd is superb and they're a 12th man for us and we, you know, credit to them. It's easy to play in front of that many people that come out every week and, and, and they never jeer, they're brilliant, literally. They're non-stop on our side, no matter how we're playing. So I think it would be wrong of us not to look at it and think we have to give them something back. And I think that's just what we're trying to do, to be honest. You need resilience when you're down the bottom and you certainly showed that again in the second half. Really just didn't give up any, any uh, challenges you fought for every ball and uh, you, got, you got your rewards. Well, this is it. I think a lot of the time when you are down the bottom, you can work very hard and not get rewards. So I think the fact that we got the rewards today, it's almost like a win. Um, so I think it will, it will stand us in good stead moving forward. Resilience that you were obviously crying out for at Oxford last week that we didn't have, you know. How, how important is this going into the last few weeks? Because the, 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 the gap's closing all the time. How important could this point be? Yeah, we need, we need about seven or eight points, I think, to, to stay up. Uh, we've got five games, maybe more, maybe more. Um, you know, we play um, Hungerford uh, as well coming, and that's going to be a crucial game. So we need a lot of, we need, we need, we need to win every game. We haven't won away in our last 11 games. What do we need to do differently on our travels to make sure that we end that run? I think we need to be harder to beat. I think we need to go there and actually play like we are playing away, show them the respect, um, and, and, and maybe not try and attack the game or win the game in the first 20 minutes, first half an hour. I think we've got to feel our way into the game, stick together, and try not to concede. I think, listen, if we don't concede, and that's as a team, if we don't concede as a team, I think we're, we've got a chance of scoring a goal. So that's what we've got to try and do.